Okay, I wanted to uh, use this video to really show how the entire Mako trade, M-A-K-O, developed from beginning to end, why it was on the watch list, and then the intraday setup, and how we called it in chat. So um, this is what Mako looked like last night. A lot of you who trade already know that this thing got decimated, had the big gap down. Now, it doesn't cost me anything to put this on watch. We don't know if it's going to set up the next day or not, right? But uh, it doesn't cost you anything to have it on a chart have it on your watch list and uh, it should have been on everybody's watch list after that move okay then this morning these are the opening four or five minute candles this morning okay so basically sold off at the open again now my question was for the room are these sellers too late are these longs that uh, didn't sell yesterday finally giving up you know coupled with people chasing this short people diving in short thinking well Mako's going to zero sometimes that's the mentality of the uh, of the short crowd or people chasing a short anyway they just think and and sometimes they're right sometimes it was just relentless selling for days um, but people chasing this down after yesterday sell off to me um, a little bit risky okay now this green candle was finally um, the fifth five minute candle of the morning buyers finally stepped in and this is when it became interesting to me when this red candle formed and my thinking is the red candle shows sellers are right back on this right you get a little bounce and sellers are right back on it now what I teach and the way I try to view charts is like this these sellers are only selling for one reason and this could be longs from yesterday this could be um, shorts it's a combination of the two um, could be some of the people that bought right here and they're saying whoops I screwed up it's going back to the lows they doesn't matter really whether they're shorting, selling from a long. Um, the point is nobody sells or shorts right here unless they think what? Unless they think this is going back through the lows of the day. It's the only reason you're going to sell here is if you think we're headed lower. I mean, it's, it's really pretty simple and logical. Okay, so my idea for myself and for the chat room, I had this on a projector, was over this red candle, in other words, the people selling right here, if it turns out they're wrong and it doesn't get back through the lows of the day, I want to go long over this red candle. In other words, when sellers right here realize they're wrong, this might be a nice long setup. That's the thinking that went behind this entry. So over this candle was 13, uh, this candle's high, I think was 1373. So my idea, 1374 long, stop below this candle at 1350. 24 cents risk, um, plenty of time to figure that out and do the math on how many shares you're comfortable risking. Now it panned out a little bit, and you can see there was the entry I just showed you. There's the stop. Now it's almost deceptive to say it was 24 cents at risk because look what happens after the trigger. Um, within five minutes, it's over 14, and another five minutes, it's over 14.20. So really, right after the trigger, yes, you had 24 cents at risk, but not really because two minutes later, break even stop. Once you get a nice move, um, you're solid all day. It never even came back down to the entry and ultimately went to 1497 the reason I put this arrow here is because this is what the chart looked like I can't scroll over because this is a um, an image a snapshot that I took um, let's see if I can bring it over here this is exactly how the chart looked I'll zoom in a little bit um, where that arrow was I'll just show you and I'll go back to that chart in just a second but this is how the chart looked when I um, turned on the projector and said this is a great time if you haven't sold any to sell some or if you have sold some this is a great time to sell some more and uh, the reasoning get my drawing tool going all right if you loosely connect the bottoms of the candles you can see some shape here right but then notice how the shape changes and it's almost straight up and big volume I don't know if this is the top for the day right but I was telling everybody it is really fun when you see this look and you sell some up here and uh, if this is the top that's pretty sad arrow if this is the top um, it's really fun to look back and say hey I sold some right there it doesn't have to be your whole position um, I'm a big fan of scaling out on the way up but this was an area that warranted selling some and then again if I uh, take this out of the way that was right there look at that I mean it was basically um, within a couple minutes of the high of the day Anytime you have that shape change, it's, a, it's what Kramer would say, a high-quality problem. When something is ripping in your favor, um, you should always take some off the table. And that was uh, literally a great, great place to sell some. Um, and I think that was it on Mako, so I can bring over the other charts. 
and I'll just quickly rip through uh, the other calls from the day. Um, PAY on the daily, very nice gap up over a lot of stuff today on big volume. PAY landed on, we didn't have it on watch last night, but it landed on our list because of this 300,000 shares in the first five minutes. I either had one or two minute candles up and turned on the projector, told everybody, hey, for you aggressive traders, PAY looks good over this base, which would have been uh, over the top of this candle right here. 34.54 with a stop below this base, um, which was probably um, 30 cents below. And right there, 34.54, it gets all the way up. It moves a buck from there. And I'll pan out on fives here. So um, you can kind of see it was right about here. And that was for aggressive traders. I'm not one to trade in the first five or 10 minutes, but I definitely had members take it because I got some thank yous. That was an idea on uh, PAY. Um, WLP, the healthcare stocks were strong. I When WLP looked like this, I said over this early high here, um, over 61, what was the high of day, 61.31, um, that WLP might go with a stop probably below the trigger candle, which was right there. So 61.32 uh, trigger, which was right here, and a stop below this candle, 61.09. Ended up going to 62.14, I think. Um, for a very nice move, 82 cents. Um, Mako went $1.23 in our favor on 24 cents risk, and then uh, Pay, P-A-Y, went $1.29 in our favor on about 30 cents risk. Um, the rest of the day, the SPY, uh, before this, the SPY literally looked right like this when I told everybody um, it's a prudent idea to go to cash, FOMC minutes are coming out, okay? And look what happens. So I was all cash at this point, and look what happens, boom. Um, just craziness. Now this ended up round tripping and, and really negating this whole sell-off from the uh, FOMC minutes. And invariably, whenever you get a move like this, um, you get people saying, hey, why aren't we shorting? Uh, my answer, my short answer is I never knee-jerk short or long into a big market move on something like an FOMC minutes because oftentimes you get a reversal. Probably could have taken a short and had a nice short in something, but I just don't want to chase. So the afternoon was uh, void of any trade ideas um, from or for me. Some other people were trading some stuff. Uh, my last idea of the day was on Boeing. When Boeing looked like this, um, it had that, what we call a PFPD, potential final push down look, that stair step um, after grinding lower all day, increasing volume, looks like they're reaching out to each other. Couple that with the fact it was hitting the 200 day on the daily. That was a dual purpose reason for my idea Told everybody Boeing might be a good fives entry or first break of a previous fives high, which would have been over this candle, 71.38, and uh, pretty quickly to 71.70. Uh, so a nice little late day trade. Again, I didn't take that. I was um, very, very satisfied with my gains from earlier in the day. Um, but anyway, that was my last idea of the day. So I'm going to quit babbling. I uh, really just wanted to explain the thinking behind um, a trade like Mako and why it was even on our list in the first place. You never know when you put them on your list if you're going to get a setup like that. But if you do, um, it's always nice to have a big trade. All right, we will uh, stop babbling here. We'll talk to you guys later.